When you start playing Go, sooner or later, you get into solving some life and death problems more seriously. And you'd be surprised to know that many players, and I don't mean just beginners, but even stronger players sometimes solve them incorrectly. Let me show you what I mean by that. Picture this. One of my students comes to me and I give him this problem. Black to play. And right there, without thinking for a second, he asked me, isn't this simple Atari going to do the trick? Just playing here. But it doesn't work. White is not going to push here and allow Black to make two eyes like this. White is going to counter Atari. Black has to capture. White connects. And it looks like Black has two eyes, but after this Atari, Black needs to connect and Black has only one eye. So it doesn't work. We go back and again, without the slightest hesitation, he says, I bet the other Atari is going to do just fine. How about this? But it doesn't work either. White will do the same thing as before. Play here, forcing Black to capture that stone. Black cannot play here because of the shortage of liberties. So capture, White connects, and you know what happens next. Black is dead. We go back. My student thinks for a second. Then he has another idea. Oh. How about if we simply block like this? This has to work. And then I ask him, well, what are you going to do after white plays here? Black can't play this Atari. The only thing that black can do is make an eye in the corner. But next, Atari, and white captures everything. Finally, he realizes that this move is very important. White plays this move every time and kills black. And then he says, Oh, this move is important. So my opponent's best move is my best move. Then we should play here. And indeed, this is the correct solution. Now, even if white tries to move the stone, black can always make two eyes. One eye in the corner and one here after capturing these two stones. Problem solved. And he looks at me and says, well, that was easy. There you go. How about one more? And this was an example of how one shouldn't solve a problem. Go problems only exist to help us train and enhance our Go imagination. So when you're playing a game or solving a problem, you should think like this. Black plays here, then white responds like this. Black plays here. It's good, but what if white responds differently? Then black here, white here, black here, white this. That isn't working. We have to go back. So playing like this, thinking like this, you can predict what's going to happen. You can read several moves ahead. In an actual game, nobody is going to let you play several moves and after you realize something isn't working, take it back and play something different. In a real game, you only have one chance, one single chance to get it right. And learning to solve problems like this is like learning how to spot landmines on a minefield by taking a casual stroll on it and hoping nothing explodes. Now, let's try to solve one more problem, but this time, we try to solve it correctly without placing a single stone on the board. Black to play. White has a clear eye in the corner, so black has to prevent white from making the second eye. Let's start with something obvious here. What if black pushes from the top? Black pushes, white connects. Black pushes from the right, white blocks. White has two eyes, white is alive. We have to play something more difficult, so let's try a wedge. Black wedges between the white stones. White has to capture that stone, so white plays Atari from the top. Now black can play to the first line, and white can't cut off both of these stones. So white needs to capture, black connects, and white connects. White still managed to make two eyes. We have to do better than that. We have to be sneaky. So let's try attaching underneath the white stones. If white cuts it off, Atari, then we counter Atari with a wedge to the left. White captures and black connects. Did you manage to visualize everything? That wasn't easy, was it? Now let's check everything with the stones. So the obvious push is not going to work. White connects, we push, white blocks, white is alive. If we try this tricky wedge, white will Atari. Black can try to play here, but white can capture. And now if black saves this stone, 
white can connect. White is still alive. But if we attach underneath like this, now if white tries to disconnect, black can attar it. And white can capture the stone, but after this connection, this is a false eye. White is dead. Okay, okay, don't panic. I should probably mention that both of the problems that we just did were harder than anything we had solved before. So if you can't solve them right now, or if you don't understand the solutions, that's perfectly normal. Don't get scared and remember that the most important thing about playing games or solving problems is having fun. So if you have fun solving problems incorrectly, it's fine, do it anyway. It's still very good for you. And don't spend too much time on one problem. If you can't solve a problem within five minutes, just put it aside. If everything seems confusing, just start with the basics. Start with some simple one-move problems, two-move problems, three-move problems. Slowly work your way up until one day, finally, you can take that problem again and you will solve it easily because now your Go imagination is much better and you can read variations much faster. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.